guys. There's a lot of these sort of like, oh, what's in my makeup bag or what's in my purse type of videos on YouTube. I thought I would be very unoriginal and do a flute version of that. Great way to start off 2017, don't you think? I realized that I've been talking about a lot of like semi-depressing topics, so you know. Just kind of wanted to lighten things up a little bit. And besides, I know you guys are a bunch of nosy little nerds, so now you get to see what's inside the bag. First thing is first, you guys are probably wondering, hey Joanna, Ooh, how come your fluter scooter bag is brown now? My other fluter scooter bag is back there. You see that black one is right there. Oh, fine, fine. I'll show you guys. This is my black patent leather fluter scooter bag, but this is the current one that I use. This bag, I believe, is called the Cedar Wood fluter scooter bag. Fun fact: the person who named this bag was actually one of the fluties in my San Francisco State Wind Ensemble. She won a contest to name this bag. This bag came out after I had ordered the patent leather black one. I think like a brown one, just a plain brown one in this style. A lot of people would dig it, at least I would. It is, I believe, about $120 which, you know, is quite a bit of money to spend on a bag. But I have been eyeing it for like three years or so now and I still wanted it. So I figured that after three years of eyeing the same bag, you know, I, 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 think, I think it's okay to buy it. The reason why I bought it is because of this super thick strap. It makes it a lot easier to carry around because you can carry it around like this and then you can lengthen it and put it over your shoulder like this like cross like that and it's nice because it can fit over another backpack so I've done that a couple of times now already it makes it so easy to transport everything without having to hold things like this probably the only thing about this bag is that the zippers don't like to close all the time. I think it's because I overstuff my bag. I think that's mostly why. Let's talk about what's actually inside of the bag. Obviously, my flute, because it is a fluter scooter bag. I will actually show you. There it is. Second thing in my bag is my piccolo. I never actually made an official video about it, but I am actually officially the third flute and piccolo player of the Ensign Symphony now. I'm not actually a substitute anymore. So yeah, I do have to bring my piccolo with me every time I go to rehearsals. That's why I went back to the flute scooter bag. I was actually not using it for a while because the straps on the black fluter scooter bag, I found that over time it was digging into my shoulder and actually causing me a little bit of pain. I really love like the texture of the bag and how the bag looks, but in terms of actually carrying it around, it ended up not being the most suitable for me. I don't actually know what I'm going to do with the other bag for now. I'm thinking of giving it to a good friend of mine, so We'll see. There you go. Well, yeah, there's my piccolo. I really should upgrade my piccolo, but I currently do not have the funds for it. I'm still saving up. I'm not actually that rich, just so you know. I chose to be a musician. A professional classical flutist. Yeah, you're gonna be broke. Here's the other thing that is in the main part of the bag. Not ashamed to say that I am a Hello Kitty fan. My mouse pad is Hello Kitty. My keyboard used to be Hello Kitty too, but I spilled tea on it and I shorted it. RIP. In this bag, I have a three peg Hercules stand. And the three pegs that I bring are the telescoping peg. So this is the one that I primarily put my flute on. These two legs move, but this one doesn't. And I like to put my flute on this one. I don't actually think it's more stable, but you know, it just gives me more peace of mind to know that my flute is on the leg that doesn't move. Then I have my piccolo peg. Some of the switches are really, really fast and it's almost impossible to just kind of be balancing everything on your lap, especially when you're short like me. For people who are taller, when they sit on a chair, their lap is actually at a 90 degree angle, but mine is not. Mine slants downwards. This just makes changing between a flute and piccolo really, really easy, really, really fast. And you know that your flute and piccolo are going to actually stay on these pegs. They're not going to be knocked around or anything because this base is really, really heavy. You're probably wondering what I put on the third one. I actually do bring 
a spare peg. And I will actually put all three on and not actually use this for myself. I have to bring this. So if the principal flutist and the second flutist, if they need to like go to the bathroom and they want to put their flute on a stand and they forgot to bring a stand, I always offer for them to put it on mine. So now we're going to look in the front pocket area. So we have my microfiber polishing cloth that came with my Brannon flute. I have not laundered this in a while, but you did not hear that from me. And then I have my flute flag. I'll link the video here of when I got this. I got this from the San Francisco Flute Festival Holy crap, like almost five years ago now. When I first paid for it, I felt like I paid way too much. I paid 40 bucks for this, but I have used it so much that I think I have justified the cost. This just kind of helps get all of the spit at the very top. Oh, not just spit, it's also condensation that's at the very tippity top of the head joint that you usually can't really reach all the corners with just your cleaning cloth. I've used it so much that I probably should think about getting a new one soon. It has been like five years. In case you're wondering why it's in two pieces, it's because if you want to swab out the entire flute without disassembling your entire flute, you screw it together and ba-bam! My cleaning rod is definitely the branded Brandon Brothers Flute Makers Incorporated cleaning rod. It's very beautiful. I quite like this rod. Oh, so nice. And this is a silk cleaning cloth that I also paid way too much money for. I got this from the local music store that I grew up going to. I actually went back to visit them and then I bought this. I think this was like close to like 10 bucks or something. It was way too overpriced. <laughs> I actually used this to kind of swab out most of the condensation and spit from my flute. And then I follow it up with the flute flag to clean everything else out in all of the little nooks and crannies. Here is my piccolo flag, which has seen very good use as you can see how warped it looks now. I actually like don't use anything else to swab out my piccolo I only use this I lost the little rubber part of the piccolo flag so yeah I actually need to repurchase both the flute flag and the piccolo flag soon I'm just really lazy now the next thing I have here are earplugs these are max pillow soft earplugs six pair value pack I actually plan on not repurchasing this because it says that you can reuse it but it gathers dust because it's so sticky and I don't like the feeling of something that has gathered dust and then you seal your ear canal with it. Someone in the comments has mentioned that you can get custom fit earplugs at an ear doctor's. I do plan on doing that one day. Again, I'm lazy. I think I am just going to get the so-called ladies version of earplugs. It's only called ladies earplugs because they're smaller and they're pink. Yay for gender stereotypes. My ear canals are actually very small so I actually plan on getting those in the future but these have worked well for one-time use. They're just little balls of goo and you roll it up, stick it in your ear and you flatten it. I usually only use it on my right ear because that's the side that gets the most abuse from the piccolo. I keep the other one open because I still have to hear other people playing and I have to be able to tune to them. Here is my cork grease. I've never actually looked at the branding for this, but this is Vanderon, Vandron, Paris. Apparently this is French cork grease. This, I believe, came with my piccolo. I've had this for a while now and I'm still using it. it. Works really well. I use it almost every time I put my piccolo together just because I don't want the cork to get too dry. I'm not going to show it to you guys, but this is the invoice for my flute. Because my flute is so expensive, it is a professional flute. If I want to cross the border into Canada, from the United States to visit my parents. And I need to bring my flute with me. I need to be able to prove to the customs officers that I actually own this thing. It is actually mine and I am not about to, one, sell it to a Canadian, or two, I need to be able to prove that I am not illegally bringing it in without paying taxes. We actually did pay 
the import taxes on this flute, which was massively disturbing how expensive that was. This thing is totally beaten up and I probably should print out a new copy of it. I need to get new things of everything in here. This is cigarette paper. No, I do not smoke. If you ever hear your keys kind of sticking and making that kind of sound. If you stick one of these sheets under the pads and then you kind of press the key down a bit, it will help blot off the extra moisture from the pad and it won't do that sticky sound anymore. Whatever country you're in, if you're underage, you have to go with your parents to buy this. I have the other, another version of it, but it's like official powder blotting paper. This is by Yamaha and you can see I've totally like banged this up real good. Some people think that adding powder to the pads can ultimately, I guess, deteriorate the pad faster. I've found that in a pinch, using powdered paper on particularly stubborn, sticky pads does really help. And then I have my Hello Kitty eraser and my Hello Kitty pencil. I have shown these before and I still use them in rehearsal. No shame. Some extra lead and I also have an eyeglass repair kit. I only really have this for the screw because the screw is tiny enough to use on a flute if you're in a pinch. I have never used this screw yet on my professional flute. I'm glad that I haven't had to use it yet because that means that I have been maintaining it well enough. But if you are on a beginner model flute, they can get knocked around quite a bit and so things can loosen up and stuff. I would bring this just in case, but only use it as a last resort. Do not try to fix things yourself. If you tighten all of the screws, you will find that you either cannot even depress some of the keys anymore or they will not come up. A lot of the screws are at specific tensions. Last resort, okay? And then lastly, I have a backup pair of earplugs. I actually got these little earplugs from my church because my church plays really loud music. I don't think they offer these anymore, but they used to offer these just in case the music was too loud for you. So I have this just in case these guys all go kaput on me and I haven't bought new earplugs yet. That is it for what is in my bag. There's nothing else in this bag. I've taken everything out. So if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there. And if you want to catch me during the week, my social media network stuffs are down there. But otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bye. I'm in my pajama bottoms, okay? That's why it goes to the floor and beyond.